Yeah. So we have these cancel, these cancel, and I get one over four. So having these pieces, we can do the math, but having the items in front of us, we can just count them. So it's sometimes easier to just have the shared space because we do at that time. E, which means what's the probability of it being green? Well, there's one, two, three greens plus one, two, three, four evens. So three plus four is seven out of nine. But we have to remove any duplicates. And so we have this one green even one, which we have to remove. So seven minus one is six. So I get six out of nine, which reduces to two thirds. So let me erase everything. Is there a race everything? That would make my life so much easier. Yes, clear. Okay. So the problem of A union B or A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. minus any intersection that there is. So the probability of A intersect B, or A and B. All right, so if they're mutually exclusive, this is zero. So it, it's, it's easy enough to do. But most cases, there's some intersection with them, so we have to remove the duplicates, because we otherwise we end up counting twice. So that's why I get one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, minus one is six out of the nine things. And when I put that in there, it takes care of it. It doesn't care if it's reduced or not. And then, are they mutually exclusive? And the answer to that is no, because there's an intersection. That's all mutually exclusive means is that they have no intersections. They never, the two things never occur together. So does everybody understand those ideas? So we have a we had a bunch of ideas pop punched into this thing, um, being mutually exclusive, um, given intersections, unions. So all they put all the concepts into one question, and then they kind of do it again and again and again. Um, but I want to make sure that you understand this nice simple one before I go on to bigger ones. And I can also make sure that people can hear me because I never have an idea about that either. <laughs> <laughs> Professor, can you explain the, the last one, please? Sure. The last one here, this mutually exclusive. So yes. if, if there is an intersection, if A and B is not zero, then they are not mutually exclusive. If, A, if this here is zero, if the probability of this is zero, they're mutually exclusive. If it's anything other than zero, they are not mutually exclusive because mutually exclusive just means that they have nothing in common. All right, and Sean's confused about the symbols. Um, it's just a shortcut way for me to write. I don't have to write, write out the word and or and given. Um, So this just means and. This means or. So this is n for intersection. Intersection. 
it was just where do they cross, which is so that's an and. U for union, that means they've been put together. Like we're going to count all of them together. So that's what or does. This means given just because that's what they decided was going to be given. It's called a pipe. Um, and it's on your count, your computer right above the uh, enter key. It's shift, enter, uh, shift um, slash, backslash, and that will give you the pipe. But this is given. And then, like I said, you'll see this, this, um, All those are just symbols for not, uh, which means that it's the opposite of P. So everything else. So really the chance of, of, of failure. So if P is the chance of success, no, all of these here, including this one, are the chance of not getting P happening. So the chance of failure. So when we get into um, binomial distributions and Poisson distributions, we're going to have success or failure. Okay, because there's really only two things that can occur. Um, I see a car go by or I don't see a car go by. I um, passed my class or I didn't pass my class. I got a heads or I didn't get heads. It doesn't matter how many options there are. It's either it happened or it didn't. Okay, and so all of these stand for that probability that we want happening, not happening. And so that's just, those are just kinds of things that we – does that help a little bit, Sean? Can you re-explain Parsi? Uh, you got cut off towards the beginning. Sure. Part C. Okay. Um, so, okay, Part C. So Part C is given that we have even cards, how many of them are green? So – in mine, I have one, two, three, four even cards. I have green two, yellow two, yellow four, and yellow six. So I have four even cards. How many of them were green? One. But we might have to do this mathematically because we can't see the sample space. So in that case, the probability of green, given we had even cards, is equal to the probability of green and even divided by the probability of being even. So I had one card that was green and even out of the nine. And even cards, I had four out of the nine. So when I do this math, I want to multiply by the reciprocal just to give it the fraction on the bottom. So those all cancel. 9 over 4. Those cancel. And I, this becomes a 1. That becomes a 1. And I multiply. I get 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. So if I, have, if I can't make the sample space, but have been given this piece of information, these pieces of information, I can find this out. So had I known that green given even was point zero six, and the probability of it being even was point one two, I could do this math out. So 6 out of 100 here, 12 out of 100 here, I could still do this math out, and I would get whatever this comes out to. I think it's probably 1 half um, because I move my decimal places. So I get 1 over 2. 
So you just divide the, the probabilities. They might be in fractions. They might be in decibels. They might be in percents. Like if they're percents, you just have to turn them back into decimals or fractions. Um, but what if it's this thing is loose? Um, but so whatever, if you've been given the probability in a decimal form, you just divide these things. If you've been given them in um, a sample space like this, you could just count them. Does that help? Yeah, thank you. No problem. Okay. So problem two, um, as I've told every class ever, I got this wrong for like the first years I was three years I was teaching this book because I never read the problem right. The 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 thing you have to do is you have to read the problem correctly. So this asks for the sample space. And what I would do is I was going through and figuring out all the things that were A and all the things that were B. And that's not what it's asking. It's asking what things are possible of occurring. And since we're rolling two dice, dice have numbers from one to six. Anything that isn't a six, anything that's above six or below one doesn't work. So I'm going to check off the ones that don't work because there's fewer of them. Okay. And these don't work because this has a seven in it. This has a seven in it. This has a zero in it. This has a zero in it. So we can't get those when we roll dice. So you need to check off the ones that can happen. And what you should find is that because we have six options of one dice and six options for the next dice, we should have 36 possible outcomes. And if you count through there, you'll notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, here, I'm going to count this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's 40. I can't be right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Forty-two. Forty-two. Yeah. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve that aren't right. That doesn't make any sense. Um, that would be on ten, thirty. Uh, one, two. We should have thirty-six possible outcomes. And that doesn't. The math doesn't work out. Seven, one, oh. Oh, that's one. <laughs> eight. I'm like, why isn't that working count counting? Because I was missing a whole column over here. So, yeah, there's 12 things that don't work, and there's 36 of them that do work. So, um, that's how you get those pieces. All right. Now, knowing that, they want to know, well, what's the probability of getting A to happen? So, well, what is A? And I'm going to uncheck all these. I wish there was a quick way to uncheck. Okay. So A is that a three or four is first. So I'm going to find all the three or fours that have come first. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Uh, do, 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 okay. And then followed by an even number. So that's not one. 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 That's one, that's one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six out of the 36 things. Makes probability, of, makes is the probability of A occurring. 
Professor, you I think you missed one in a, the um nope. One, two, three, four, fourth row, the last one. This one, fourth row. Fourth row here? Yeah. I have different mine are gonna be this is four followed by a seven. Oh, okay. So that's not a possible uh, that's not a possible outcome. Okay, sorry, sorry. That's fine, that's fine. So um so we have six possible outcomes that will make this true because it's a three or four followed by an even number. Okay, so I got those. The next one asks us, well, what's the probability of B occurring? And you then find out all of the things that add up to at most seven. So that means seven or less. And you're going to find all of the ones that add up to seven or less. So you're going to do a little math. And you can find that there's a lot of these. So so out of my possible outcomes, because I realized that um, 0 plus 3 is less than 7, but it's not a possible outcome. So Okay, so those are all my possible outcomes. And I count them up out of 36. And then they want to know what does A given B mean? So A is that we have a 3 or 4 that's rolled first, followed by an even number, given that the sum of the values is less than 7, or 7 or less. So that's all it means. So this. Whatever this is, given that this thing happens, and that we could have said, knowing that we have rolled a seven or less, what's the probability of finding a three or four followed by an even number? They could switch the sentences around, but you have to figure out which of those things that they have. And it says, um, probability of rolling a three or four on the first die, given that the second die is even. Well, no, that's just the probability of A. Uh, the probability that the sum of the dice is at most seven, given that the first die is three or four. Well, no, that's backwards, because this thing is B and this thing is A, and we want to have the, the given in the right order. So that's the big thing, is we're looking for the word given. Given, 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 and given. And so then you got to figure out which one has this thing given that this thing occurred. And so then you just find it. And then what is the probability of that happening? Well, we can just check off the ones that are true. Oh, that's nine, so that doesn't count. Um, that one, that one, nope, 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 nope. So there's one, two, three of them out of all of the ones of all the possible outcomes that we had for B. And so if we knew how many outcomes there were for B, we could then have just done that division. Or we could know that this is three out of 36, and this was whatever B. Um, whatever B came out to be 7 out of 12. Three out of 36 divided by seven out of 12. So I flip these, I get three out of 36 times 12 over 7. Anyway, something's wrong.
Probability of A and B is 336. Yeah, okay, that'll work. So, yeah, so 12 goes into this and goes into this three times. Three goes into that once and goes into that once. So we get one times one is one, and one times seven is seven. But like I said, if we had the counts, we could just, if we knew how many there were, we would have found that this is 3 out of 21, which also reduces to 1 over 7. And then are they mutually exclusive? Well, no, because these things have intersections. So they're not mutually exclusive. And then part F, are they independent of each other? So they're independent if the probability of A happening is not affected by the probability of B happening. Okay, so because the probability of A is different from the probability of A given B, they are not independent of each other. They are dependent upon each other. And most things are dependent upon each other. Like one thing usually affects the outcome of the other in these types of things. So um, I didn't get my steps in. Uh, so in most of these are going to be, are they independent? And the answer is probably going to be no. Um, just because one thing, the probability of one usually affects the probability of the other thing occurring. So problem five, uh, three is the, I think the only problem that actually has some math, oh, I think three and then I think maybe there's another one. It's the same problem, um, but it's the only one that actually has math in it. So we know that probability of C is 0.2, the probability of D is 0.3, and the probability of C given D is 0.4. And they want to know the probability of C and D. I'm just trying to move stuff over so I can see both things here. There. Okay. So, probability of C. Perfect. Yes. Okay. So, if you need something with and, you yeah. have to separate them. So, like the probability of A and or C and. I'd have to do probability of C times the probability of D. That only works That's if correct. they, well, yes and no. So that only works if they're independent of each other. So I could, okay. yes, I could, I could say, well, I'm going to figure that out. That the probability of these of C and D is 0 0.06, but that's only true if C and D are independent of each other. We don't know that. But we do know this, this C given D. Okay. And the probability of C given D is the probability of C and D over the probability of D. So we have a little bit of algebra. OK. We know this is 0 0.4. We don't know this. And we know this is the probability is point zero point three. So we're just gonna cross multiply and solve for X. So we multiply both sides here by zero point three.
those cancel, I get x. And here I get 0 0.12. So yes, if they had been independent of each other, there would have been 0 0.06. But this tells us that they're not independent of each other. So there are dependent uh, probabilities. And one has some effect over the other one. So therefore, our probability is we can solve an al using algebra to solve for the unknown. And then they ask, are they mutually exclusive? Are they independent? And then what is, um, oh, wrong problem. What is the probability of D given C? So now they just want you to switch them. But I know C given D and D given C are the same number. It's still this. And so this is now going to be the point uh, 2. So I'm going to plug that in and solve for this one, for this one here. I'm going to plug the values into this formula, changing that this is now going to be P of C and everything. And this is going to be D given C. And we're going to do the math and find out what that value is. And notice they're not the same. And yes, they add up to one, but that doesn't have to be the case either. <laughs> so don't just go, oh, well, they always add up to one. That's not true. It just happens to work out in this problem. OK, so it's uh, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> Um, the next one, four, they say that they're mutually exclusive. Well, because they're mutually exclusive, they have no intersection. So that's why um, the answer is they're zero. And this is zero because um, they're, oh, they're like, well, why is probability of h given g this false? Well, because there's no intersection. So this is 0. If the top number in a fraction is 0, the whole thing is 0. Because 0 divided by anything is 0. So that's why it can't be true. What is the value of uh, probability of h or g? Well, you're just going to add them up and subtract off the intersection. So this plus this minus 0. And are they independent? And the, again, the answer is um, no, because the probability of h given g is not the same as the probability of h. So given that this occurs, the probability is 0. So it's, that's not the same as this one. The probability that g given h occurs is not the same as the probability of g, because it's 0. So if one thing happens, it affects the other thing. And so therefore, they're in, they are dependent upon each other. OK, so um, number six has to do with um, here that whether you speak at home
Not sure why I keep. Uh, is it only me uh, that lost connection? No, I lost connection. Um, so it could be Blackboard that's being weird. Um, the guy could, in the hotspot seems to be doing just fine. This is well, wild. I, it could be the weather, like because it's kind of this misty, cloudy, gray, you know, gray, and I don't know if it's like affecting the internet, like in this area. I mean, my kids are always. It's, uh, it's clear and sunny up here in Vermont. Oh, we hate you. <laughs> <laughs> So did they? Uh, we were going to go to Vermont, but they uh, blocked uh, Middlesex County. Is that, or so is that no longer the case? Like the summer, they would block Middlesex County. So I thought that's why we didn't go there this summer. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. <laughs> well then, don't tell. Don't, don't, I won't tell. I won't tell if you won't. <laughs> Lifted now because Maine was the same way and they lifted the ban for masks. Right, I know. I know. We went up to we went to Maine yesterday and got to uh, went to Goldenrod at York Beach and got our our um, annual uh, um, taffy and and uh, um, pancakes and and then we, <laughs> we walked around saw the ocean. But yeah, no, it's 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 weird. Like like one day my kids like. They're all they're on remote they're on hybrid so they're on remote half the time, and of course the one the the first week that they were um, first day of school or second day of school like the internet popped dropped and they're like um, I was like what's going on I need help they can't get into class and I'm like is everything blinking she's like yeah I said well then it's working and I said just give it a second and and like a minute like as soon as she like. I called her. She was like, "Yeah, it's working again." But like, they couldn't get in for like 30 seconds, and that was like freaking everybody out. So I don't. This is kind of this is the one problem with the online learning is that it's if if the internet decides to die and Comcast, you know, or Verizon, you know, decides to yeah, you know, whatever, uh, then it's going to be a problem. And I like we need to get faster internet. I'm like, I don't think that's the problem because we're at 600 megabits per second. So we should all be fine, but I'm getting crappy reception. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna run a speed test. See what I'm. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm picking up at 150 megabits a second. So I have no idea what it could be. It, it's, it can't be my computer and it's not my, my Wi-Fi. I have no idea what's, what's wrong with this and why it's all crackly and dropping. So anyway, back to the, the problem at hand. So um, 286 million people live in the United States, which obviously is not right, but they just want to pick out a big number. Of those... 33,700,000 speak a language that's not English at home. Um, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Usually I forget to turn off the uh, uh, turn off my, my microphone and, and the camera, too, when, I'm, I'm, when I get disconnected. That was the last couple of times. Like, I'm talking, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not on the screen. So, um, so... 286 million people live in the United States. 33.7 million people speak a language other than English at home. And of those, over 55% of those who don't, who don't speak English at home, 50, over 55% of those speak Spanish at home. Okay, so obviously these numbers are all made up. Um, but they just wanted you to, to, to think about this stuff. So we have... E is that they speak English at home. E prime, which means not E, means that they don't speak English at home. And S is that they speak Spanish at home. So they want to find the probability of not E, that you don't speak English at home. So it's just going to be this number divided by this number. And I know all of you can do that in your head, so I'm going to, you know, 
So 33,700,000 divided by 286 million. And so that's the number I get, and it's a drop down. So we don't even have to think about this. It's a drop down list. So this doesn't make sense because I know that 33 divided by 286 is much smaller than 0.8. Um, these two things don't make sense because I have greater than and less than. So this is the only option that makes any sense. So there, even if I didn't do the math, the drop down menu gives me the answers. They should have just left this open ended and, and had you type that in, but they didn't see that as a necessary thing. So what is, if this is not E, is 0.1178, what is the probability of E? Well, those two things have to be equal up to one because those are the only options you have. You either speak English at home or you don't speak English at home. So they have to add to one. But again, it's a drop-down menu with the same four numbers. So the only one that, other one that's not an equal sign, that, that's an equal sign, is this one. And obviously, yeah, those together look like they could add up to one. So that's why they have to be the correct answers. The next one, what is the probability that they speak Spanish? Well, because it says over 55% of those who don't speak English speak Spanish, that over mean is the same as greater than. So it's going to be a greater than. They have two of them. So I have to choose between the two. Well, this one says 55%. That's the probability of given that they don't speak Spanish, what's the probability that they, that, sorry, given that they don't speak, uh, they don't speak English, what's the probability that they speak Spanish? That's the 0.55. So I'm now down to one choice because I've used the other two numbers. So that's where this one comes from. But if you're like, well, how did they get that? We have 55% of this value. So times 0.55. And that's where I get the 0 0.0648 right there. Okay, but it's more than that because it says over 55%. The last one asks, well, what is the probability they speak Spanish given that they don't speak English? Well, that's right here. <laughs> it's in. It's actually in the statement. Of the people who don't speak English, over 55% of them speak Spanish. So that's where that number comes from. So again, while it looks like there should be lots of math, there's no math because they've given you all they've given you four answers and you're going to use all four of them and you just if you just use a little thinking then you there's no mathematics that has to be done which is kind of sad um, like to me I would have left all those as empty spaces and let you figure them out but um, they didn't do that uh, the next one Number six, um, yeah, I guess so. So it's pretty, did I drop out again? Oh, people are coming in, okay. I just heard a dinging. I had no idea if I was like if I'd fallen out or come back. Um, oh, that's fine. You don't have to tell me. I I don't even see the 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 thing. But appreciate you sharing with us. Tell me how. It, tell us how it goes. Professor, I had a quick question. Yes. Uh, before we move on, for number five, I was curious when I was reading this question. How do we know to a 
if they don't speak English, they it, that they're mutually exclusive that they speak Spanish. Like, what if someone speaks Spanish and another language that's not English at home? Um, because they're not. They didn't. They they made this in simplest terms. They're telling you that it's. They're telling you it's those things. You're right. They could speak Spanish and you know German or Spanish and you know um, Chinese. It, there's all kinds of things that could happen. But they're trying to keep it as simple as possible. I mean, like you know, and realistically, you could speak English and Spanish at home. You know, there's. But I think. If that's the case, they're like, okay, well, um, I think because they're saying that they don't speak any English at home, they're not dealing with those bilingual people in you know, English and another language. But okay. they're they're dealing with the bilingual, but all the people who are bilingual in uh, Spanish and you know Italian. I mean, I don't know a lot of people who would in America like like. It would, like I know, um, my son's girlfriend is Colombian and um, uh, um, Arabic, but I, I, I mean, they speak English at home, but I, I, I don't know. Like it wouldn't make sense for the mom to speak um, Colombian and the dad to speak Arabic and talk to each other because they're not even close to the same language. Right. So just take it upon the question then. Okay. Yeah, I take it upon the question that's given, right? I mean, right. but I mean, technically, it could be that, you know, and the kids have to translate between the parents, you know, but it would seem odd that, like, how did you get married if you couldn't talk to each other? <laughs> you know, I, like, like, thing, like, while it's a, anything's possible, some things don't always, you know, like, there's always you know, and there's always you know, gray in all this stuff. Some things don't make any sense. <laughs> like you know, some of the gray is like, well, there had to be some way that they people these people communicated if they're neither one of them is speaking. Like, I mean, I guess if you were rent if you were renters and like were um, like college students living in a, an apartment together, you might all speak different languages and it really wouldn't matter because like you're basically all you care about is who whose turn is it to pay them. You know, Pay, you know, has everybody paid the rent and who bought the milk? You know, but I mean, you could technically live completely separate lives, you know, as a college student, you know, in a dorm or in an apartment. But like as a married couple family, I think it would be kind of weird for nobody to speak the same language. Like there's gonna be, I, I mean, it's like I said, it's possible, but I, I can't see how that would function. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. But yes, you. The, a lot of these questions don't put too much thought into the the the, the ideas in them, um, because they're just trying to make up a word problem, and then go from there. And um, there's one of them that's really kind of feels really racist and icky every time I get to it, and my skin kind of crawls. But I just go, let's just pretend they're cars, you know, <laughs> and go from there, because it's like. I don't know how this book got, how that question got written and put into a textbook by somebody from California who's, you know, so A, uh, uh, professors are usually fairly liberal, B, California is extremely liberal, and we're in the 20th century, we're in the 21st century. I don't know how this question got made or and put in there, but it's survived all these years, and I'm like, we'll just go with it. I yeah. feel, as a white guy, middle-aged white guy who speaks, I feel really creepy about asking this question, but I well, don't have any other questions. Moving forward and not backwards and not <laughs> That's it, and I'm like, I'm like, don't, don't be mad at me. Anybody who's offended by this wasn't my idea. And <laughs> so this is one of those questions. Here's another one, like where they're talking about green cards. I feel weird about these questions, you know, but I just go with them. And then just pretend that they didn't happen and, and take a shower later. And, and, you know, I feel better. So, Everyone uh, <laughs> I, I mean, just, just, just don't shoot the messenger. So here we're talking about getting a green card. Um, and the United States issues 69,000 green cards a year in the lottery. I have no idea if that's true. I didn't even realize that there was a lottery. So I don't know. Um, somebody can fill me in at some point if anybody ever has any ideas about how this works. I don't know. Um, 
Yeah, but at least they explain what a green card is. Uh, and then somebody from Germany, uh, out of approximately six and a half million people, entered the lottery. And so G is the probability that you win a green card. So to find that, we have to find what the probability of this thing of, they want to know what's the probability of getting a green card. So it's just some math. Sixty-nine thousand divided by six point five. Why did I put six point five? Six million five hundred thousand, and we get this number. So about a little more than one percent, one percent chance. So winning that is 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 pretty pretty sweet. So then they tell you they they add to the question. They say, all right, well, you have a 1% chance of winning a green card out of all those people. But they send a letter to finalists in the summer, and they send out 110,000 letters. So now they want to know what's the probability of getting a green card if you've gotten a letter. And the probability of getting a green card if you didn't get a letter is zero, So, because um, you're not a finalist. But the probability of getting, or I mean, I guess maybe if you, the letter, you never got the letter and in the mail, I got eaten. You know, that's a possibility. But again, they sent out 10,000 letters to finalists. So if you're not in that 110,000, you're not getting one. But so if you di if you were in the finalist category, they want to know the probability of getting a green card. So now it's still 69,000, but it's going to be divided by the smaller group that you were a finalist. And we find out that it's you know 62.72, and they want to round to three, four decimal places. So we have to look at this next value and decide if we're going to round up or down. All right. And so green card, given that you're a finalist, because that's what they decided that G is going to be it. You get a green card, and F is that you're a finalist. So get, getting a green card, given that you're a finalist, is you know 62.73 percent. So a much bigger chance because this is a much smaller number. And then are they independent? No, <laughs> because um, this, and this are not the same. So had they been the same, then they would have been uh, independent, but they're not independent. And then are they mutually exclusive? No, because again, um, the only people getting green card, like there's an intersection of those. The people who were finalists got the green card. There were 69,000 of them. So there's, there is an intersection of those. And here they say you can be a finalist and win a green card. So you can, um, what would be mutually exclusive is uh, getting a green card and not getting a green card. Those are mutually exclusive. Um, uh, or getting a green card and um, I guess being a U.S. citizen, because if you're a citizen, I don't think you need you don't need the green card. So because it's only for non -citizens. So like there are, there are things that could be, you know, but in the problem, but realistically here they're asking are green cards and finalists uh, mutually exclusive? And the answer is no, because actually everybody who won a green card was a finalist. It's a complete subset of finalists. So not only is it an intersection, it you have to be a finalist to get a green card. So G is everybody in G was an F. There is actually nobody in G who's not an F. Um, this one here is again similar. Um, they're asking about you know putting money into an envelope and are um, you know here's the probabilities of these things occurring that um, you return the money 
that you went to an economics class or that you were in a different class. So this is everybody who returned the money. These are the people who returned it from if they were in economics, and these are the people who returned it if they were in business, psych, or history. And so the probability of returning it, they just told you. It's this number. The probability of getting your money back if you were in economics class. So they want to know, they just really need the values here. So return the money is R, that you were in economics class is E, and this is and or are given. So you have to use given because they're saying, what's the probability of this if you were in economics class? And then again, they tell you that value. What's the probability of giving it back if you were from another class? Well, they gave you that value. Return the money and other class, and again, it's given. And then, is the money being returned independent? Um, and again, it's no, because you're more likely to return the money if you were in an economics class than if you were in one of the other classes. And do you think that they're more selfish? And um, here they say, that I'm gonna, they say that they're not because more people who were in economics returned the money than those who didn't. So you more than 50% of the people who were in economics class returned the money, whereas less than half of the people who were in the other classes returned the money. So these people were less likely to keep the money for themselves. Seems like a weird question. I don't even understand why they asked that. Um, this here, we're getting into uh, Venn diagrams a little bit. If I show you a Venn diagram, it will help see, you see this a little better. Is there a, oh, is there a color? Would be nice. Color, oh, good. Okay. So since we're talking about blood, there's a red one and a purple one. Okay. So we have people who are O, and people, this is RH negative. Uh, I think RH negative, yep. And this is O, and this is, that was horrible. Uh, Okay, so these in the red are all the people who are O, in the purple are all the people who are negative, and this blue section here, these are all the people who are O negative, okay, because there's an intersection of those things. It would be nice if they'd squeeze together like it's supposed to. All right. So um, we have O, we have negative, and we have O negative. And the data shows that 41% of the people are O. Forty-one percent. Um, Sixteen percent are negative. Okay. 
and 46% um, are either O or negative. Forty-six percent are O or negative. They want to know what's the probability of the people who are O negative. So they want to know this value here. They want to know how many people are X. All right. And to do that, because we have an or, this plus this minus this equals this number here. So if this is 41% and this is 16%, some of both of those groups fall into this middle area. And so we can find that out by just you know, doing algebra. So we add these together. I get, um, so 46 is equal to, that's what, 57% minus x. And then I can just, you know, either look at it and go, all right, um, 57 minus what number is 46, and I'm going to get, or I could do the algebra and I bring this over, multiply by negative value, you know, all that. And so either way, I'm going to get this 11. So 11% 11 of the population is O negative. And then what's the probability that people are not O negative? Well, because these two numbers have to equal 1, 1 minus 0 0.11 is everybody else. So everybody else, sorry, excuse me, is, so this number plus this number has to be Ooh, I can make it small. I didn't know. I did not know that. And I can move it. Well, that would have been nice to know. So x is equal to 11%. Right. So that's O negative. So O negative plus not O negative has to equal 1. And so if this is 11 plus x equals 1, again, we solve for x. Subtract 11 from both sides. You know, this is 11%, sorry. And this is 100%. So x is equal to 100 minus 11, which gives us the 89%. And they want it in decimals, so. All right, but that's what we have to do because not means that they're complements, so you're either, you either are or you are not. And those values, values have to balance out. I'm gonna save this because I like the Ah, board. Cool. I can even export it. I can save it. Cool. I like this. It's free. Um, and remove ads for all participants for all your boards. Well, oh, I'm not paying for it. How much is it? Just curious. 
teachers. Uh, pricing, education. Nine dollars. Is it nine dollars a year? Oh, nine dollars a month? I'm not paying nine dollars a month for something. That's ridiculous. All right, I'll use the free one. Okay. But that might be helpful because, I, again, I have to switch back and forth between stuff, and I don't like this. I like having all one thing together. All right. So college, 65% uh, of courses have final exams. 43% have research papers. 31% have both. All right. Um, they want to know what's the probability of having a research paper or a final exam, and what's the probability that you don't have either. So that's just like this problem here. So I'm not going to do that one. I'm going to skip it. All right, number 10 has to deal with uh, contingency tables. And what contingency tables are are just this value here is the total of everything. So they looked at 217 kids, OK? And they either had wavy hair or straight hair. And then they either had brown hair, blonde hair, black hair, or red hair. There was no bald people because um, they were kids. Um, and they filled in the values. So you, they did counts. And then what happens is we can total down and total across. And contingency tables allow us to easily do conditional um, probabilities because this number here is 17 out of the 46 people had wavy black. Given that they had wavy hair, 17 of them had black hair. So 17 out of the 46 is the probability that you had black hair given that it was wavy. Given that it's blonde, 15 out of 18 had straight hair. But 15 out of, ev 15 out of everybody had straight blonde hair. So I can easily see um, percentages. Uh, I can see probabilities of intersections and con and conditionals. And I can also see unions, because I could easily look and go, well, if you had blonde hair, it's the addition of blonde wavy and blonde straight. I can add up these two things, and I could find the, uh, you know, you had blonde or brown hair. You had. Uh, straight brown or straight blonde hair. I can add those up. And so that's why we like these um, contingency tables because it has all the little values in it and we can add them up and figure out all the little pieces. So what you need to do is you're going to need to do some subtraction and adding. So like to find this, it's adding. To find this, it's subtracting. To find this, it's adding. To find this, it's subtracting. And then the only one you have to do work on is this one because once we know the totals, we can subtract those totals to find this value. And then we can subtract this from this total to find this value. But everything else is a single one. So this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here are easy. This one you have to do before you can do. You have to do all these before you can do this one. And then after you do this one, you can find this one. Or you have to find this one, and then you can find this, and then you could find this by adding those. So there's a little bit of work to, that gets involved in finding those answers. And then they just are going to pick out the probabilities of things occurring. So it's either going to be um, an intersection or a conditional, um, except for this one that says, OK, uh, having brown hair is B. What's the complement or not B? So brown hair is this value. Everybody else doesn't have brown hair. So it's the total minus whatever this is. And that will tell you how many of, or you could add those up, whichever makes you happy. Um, for those of you who are afraid of subtraction, you know, you can, you know, but you have to do a little bit of math to find out the knots or the intersect or the unions. And then, is having brown hair, um, what, what does the complement mean? 
of not having brown hair? Well, it's just not having brown hair. It means you have blonde hair, black hair, or red hair. So complement just means it's anybody else's color. I went through that rather quickly, but it's kind of like there's no, again, there's no math in, there's very little math in statistics. Um, this one here, we are looking at a tree diagram, and uh, this tree diagram is different from that tree diagram, so I get them tend to get them confused. Um, so we have an unfair coin, and we have a cup. The cup has 10 red marbles, four yellow marbles, and two blue marbles. And the coin, heads comes up two-thirds of the time, and tails comes up one-third of the time. So what they've done is they put the probabilities of each thing happening. And to find this spot here, we just multiply whatever things we're interested in. And here they want to know tossing a red, sorry, tossing a head on the coin and pulling out a red bead. So a head is two thirds, a red bead is 10 out of 16. We'd multiply those together and So I have uh, two thirds times 10 over 16, right? 10 over 16, two thirds, yep, yeah. okay. So I can do a little canceling. Do a little more canceling. And I get 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 4 is 12. And that's my answer. So yay me. But I could have just multiplied this and gotten 20 out of 48. And it would have been fine with that as well. See, it doesn't need simplification. And there's one problem. It's like, it, to me, it's silly that they have two problems that are kind of the same, that, that are the same. Well, they change the number of red beads and stuff like that. But then, like, just make it one problem, and then you're, you're, you're on with it. I don't know. This here is going to be the same thing. Um, what is the probability of getting a blue bead? Well, um, we have five red beads, three yellow beads, and eight blue beads out of how many of our beads there are. And then the fake, the, the bad coin, and one third and two thirds. Well, to get a blue bead, it's this one, probability of this thing happening, plus the probability of this thing happening. All right? But the thing is, this and this is one. Because, right, again, if we go back to a little bit of math that we had. One third times 8 over 16 plus 2 thirds times 8 over 16. Well, a multiple. Uh, that is an 8. It's a really bad 8, but it's an 8. I'll make it better. Well, we had the distributed property that said, uh, okay, I can do 8 over 16 times 1 third plus 2 thirds. Well, that's 1. <laughs> 
So I get 8 over 16 times 1, which gives me 8 over 16. So because all they're asking about what is the probability of getting a blue bead, it's just the probability of pulling out a blue bead. A blue bead. It had that that doesn't uh, that isn't affected by um, what I flip on a coin. So, the, like the the flipping of the coin has no effect on what bead I pull out. Like it's not like choosing oh you're gonna pull from this bag or this bag. It's like here's a bag of beads. You're gonna pull out. You're gonna flip a coin and then pull out the bead. So there's no effect whatsoever. But if it this had been an effect and like, okay, you're going to pull from one of these three bags and they have different values in them, then it would change how many beads there were. But because there's no effect on, the, like if these were different probabilities, then it would change the probability of, um, like if I'd broken these into two different bags and I'd made them different, then it would change my probability of getting beads. Uh, just kind of silly. Uh, this one is also weird. It's about um, uh, cancer. <laughs> Always fun, fun topic. Um, and whether or not you can, and, like, there's a test, and there's a um, so the chance of getting this cancer is 48%. And then if you take a test, it has a 53% uh, chance of giving you a wrong answer. Um, so it's wrong in either either way. Whether if you have cancer, it's wrong, or if you don't have cancer, it's wrong 53% of the time. So why they're giving a test that's wrong 53% of the time makes no sense to me. It's kind of like the uh, COVID test. They could have put this as COVID and said, okay, um, it's wrong 53%. Are you going to take the test? We're going to stick. The, we're going to jam this thing down your nose and into your throat, and you're going to take money from you, and it's still going to be incorrect 53% of the time. And no matter what your result is, you have to stay in your room. For, you have to stay in the house for 14 days. Why are you taking the test? <laughs> just stay in the house for 14 days and just go on. You know, it's like, like I don't understand why people would take this test, like the COVID test, because you still have to. Like, our contract at school says if we are found to be trace, you know, if they found trace we uh, you know, contact, we have to take the test and quarantine for 14 days. And if we come back, we get a negative t uh, um, test result, we have to quarantine for 14 days. So why take the test? I don't understand. It's like, I'm just gonna quarantine for 14 days and get it and then come back. But um, this, you know, you're taking this test that's wrong half the time. So this is um, the probability, so they're making a tree diagram. The probability that you have cancer is 0.4819. The probability that you don't have cancer is one minus that. One minus 0.4819. Okay. The probability that the test is wrong is 53%. Uh, is right is 53%. Or the sorry that it's wrong is 53%, and that it's not wrong is one minus 0.53. And so those things stay the same on the next tree. So it's F is still 0.53, and not F is still 1 minus 0.53. So that's how you calculate those values. This is the one that was given, and then this is going to be the 1 minus, this is going to be the complement. And then they ask you, what's the probability of getting cancer? Well. They told you it's this. The probability of getting the cancer is 0.4819. The probability of getting a false result if you have cancer is 53%. Because, and the probability of getting a false result if you don't have cancer is still 53%. Because that's what they told us that the probability of getting the false result is 53%. Again, whether you have cancer or not has no effect on that. It's always wrong 53% of the time.
and then would you take it? And so if a test comes back positive, um, can you assume you have cancer? And the answer is no, because it's wrong 53% of the time. So it's a 50, 50. So if it comes back positive, it could be right. It's right half the time and it's wrong half the time. So if you don't have cancer, it's right half the time and it's wrong half the time. So this test is not useful. So it seems dumb that they would even ask this, this kind of question. I don't know. And then the last one, they want you to make a contingency table, knowing that um, there are uh, 10,000 people in the survey. So that's where this number comes from. And they've broken them up into percentages. So 48.6% uh, uh, are female. So 48.6% uh, of the total are female. So that's how they got this number. The males obviously are the opposite, whatever's left, 51.40%. So that's how they got, and then they multiply by 10,000 to get this. And then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take this number and multiply it by this percent, and this percent, and this percent, and then this number and multiply it by this percent, and this percent, and this percent to fill in these. And then add those up and you'll get these values. So this one is. 4860 times 0.0503. And you do that with every one of these times its percent. So it's 4860 times 80.8136. 4860 times 0.3161. 5140 times 0 0.0504. And then you keep doing that for all of these. And then this one here is this number plus this number. And you're going to have to round to the nearest whole number. So you're going to round those and then add them up to get these things. OK? Everybody understand how those questions are? are any, anybody have any questions on any of those things? Yes. OK. Yes, you have a question, or yes, you're good. <laughs> uh, I understand. No questions. OK. Again, wait. Oh, there's a comma. Remember, commas save lives. Uh, why? What am I in that I escape? All right. Let's. Let's see grandpa, as opposed to Let's see grandpa, comma, save lives. See, if you'd done, if you did, Stephanie, if you didn't have the comma, you would, it would have said, I understand no questions. And which is what I saw for the first time, and then I saw the I saw the comma, so I was like, "Oh, I understand. No questions." <laughs> All right. Um, so I guess I'll stop recording this. Come on, let me stop recording.